Hey guys, welcome to Threads. This week we're doing a really quick video to show you how to and how to not coil cables. Let's do it. So this may seem a bit petty, but it's actually a really important thing to coil your cables properly. Not only does it ensure that they're going to last for a long time, but it also means they're not going to get really knotted and full of kinks. So they're going to be nice, long, straight cables that you're able to use uh, for exactly what you want to use them for. So first thing we'll do is show you a couple of methods of how not to coil a cable. And I'm sure some people already do this. Um, and then we'll show you kind of the correct way to coil a cable. So this is a perfect example of not coiling a cable properly and the problems it can cause. You come in on a Sunday morning, you've probably not got much time to set up and sound check, and you're spending 10 minutes uncoiling cables because the guys last week or guys midweek rehearsal didn't tidy them up properly. So uh, not only does this save you time and make your gear last longer, um, but it's also respectful to the church, it's respectful to the other members of your team because um, it's going to save them some time and hassle when they're next serving. One example of how not to coil a cable, I saw this all the time growing up and I still see it when I play in uh, venues and different gigs, is holding the cable by the adapter in one hand around the elbow and really tightly pulling it. Uh, this isn't a good way. It, it does keep the cable neat, but you're putting lots of strain on the adapter and especially around the elbow here, you're putting lots of strain on the cable, so you're more likely to cause the cable to break. Another method of coiling your cables incorrectly would be to simply coil them up like this. And while that's nice and neat and much less strain on the cable than around the elbow, if you do that enough times with the same cable, it's going to end up like one of those old telephone wires, really coiled up and windy. What we would consider the correct way to coil a cable is actually very similar to the last method I showed you. You hold the cable out, pull some slack in between your fingers, and you make a loop. And if you saw, I twisted the cable towards me then. You go to make another loop, and this time, if you watch my fingers, twist the cable away from me and my arm comes underneath. So over and under, and I'm collecting it in this hand, and I can make the loops as big or as small as I need them to be. The reason this method works is because each time you make a loop of the cable, you're doing it in opposite directions. So you're not going to end up with a telephone wire for a cable. It's going to be able to be nice and straight and used uh, for years to come. What I'll do now is I'll show you how quickly cables can be coiled using that correct method. So I've got probably a 30 or 40 foot cable here. And once you get practiced at coiling these cables, you can get a cable done very quickly. Don't have to think about it. You'll be packed down in five, 10 minutes after your service. You can go and have a coffee with everyone else. So that looks nice and neat. You're looking after the cable. You're making it easy for the next person that's going to use it to come and just grab it. They're not going to have loads of kinks and coils to uh, try and get rid of. Um, and that's ready now for a bit of a Lex tape around it just to uh, keep it together just throughout the week. Um, or if you want to reduce your waste, then some like Velcro cable ties are a really good way. They can stay on the cable the entire time. One thing that can be really helpful if you're in a church that sets up and packs down every week is to label all of your cables. So this uh, cable is labeled up as Shout. So for us at Coventry Elim, this is for the Shout mic. Other people would call that the musical director. So when it gets to set up, whether it's a tech team, setup team, or musicians that set up your equipment, they can go to you know, wherever you keep your cables, pick the cable up, identify what it's for straight away, and you're just saving yourself some time uh, and bringing a level of consistency to what you're doing on a Sunday morning. Uh, and last thing for today, go and buy yourself some good quality cables. This is one of my jack cables. I've had it for four or five years now. Um, it's Van Damme cable with Nutric adapters. Uh, if you're in the UK, there's a company called Designer Cable. They're on eBay, Amazon, they have their own website. Uh, you can go on, you can customize the color of the cable, the color of the adapters, whether it's a straight or a right angle adapter. They make XLR cables as well. So if you're in the market for needing to get some new cables, I would recommend uh, Van Damme Cable, Nutric Adapters. 
Um, if you've got the skills, you can obviously build them yourself and save yourself some money. Buying yourself some good quality cables is really important. If you buy something that's good quality, chances are you're only going to buy it once. If you buy something that's not as good, you might buy it and replace it and repair it several times. So it might be a bit of a bigger investment initially, but hopefully you're saving yourself or your church some money in the long run because you're not having to replace gear. Thanks for watching this week's video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope it was really helpful to you. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. We'd love to see some more people around this channel. Uh, give us your comments and feedback, suggest new videos for the future, and we'll see you next Friday for a new video.